Have you ever wondered how counterfeit coins can fool even the most seasoned collectors? This was the question that echoed in Detective James's mind as he navigated through a case that was unlike any he had encountered before. Picture the scene. A quaint antique shop nestled in a sleepy town, its owner, Mr. Thompson, a respected figure known for his keen eye for valuable collectibles. But even he had been taken in by a collection of coins so beautifully crafted they could have easily passed as the real deal. These weren't just any coins. They were rare pieces, each with a rich history etched into their metallic surfaces. The fact that they were fakes was a shock to Mr. Thompson, who had unknowingly purchased them, and to Detective James, who was tasked with unraveling this intriguing puzzle. As he entered the antique shop, James was greeted by Mr. Thompson's frantic gestures and a whirlwind of explanations. Amidst the shop's eclectic mix of antiques, a display case stood out. Inside, the counterfeit coins glinted under the soft light, their intricate details and high-quality craftsmanship begging for a closer look. James obliged, his experienced eyes examining each coin with a mix of admiration and curiosity. The counterfeits were so well made that they had fooled Mr. Thompson, a seasoned collector, and potentially many others. Their craftsmanship suggested a master at work, someone who had an intimate knowledge of coins and a deft hand that could replicate the minutest details. As James held one of the counterfeit coins, turning it over to study its details, he couldn't help but marvel at the level of skill involved. The case was proving to be more complex than he had initially thought. The stakes were high, but so was James's determination to get to the bottom of it. With the coins as his first lead, James was ready to delve deeper into the world of counterfeit coins. He had a feeling that this case was going to take him on a journey that was as intricate and layered as the counterfeit coins themselves. It was clear that these were no ordinary counterfeits. The game was afoot. James knew he had to dig deeper, so he went to the local coin collector's club. The club was a haven for numismatists, those who found joy in the study or collection of coins, banknotes, and medals. Some were casual hobbyists, others were serious professionals, but all shared a common passion for these tangible pieces of history. James introduced himself, laying out his suspicions about the counterfeit coins. The room fell silent. The collectors, usually so enthusiastic, were struck by disbelief. These were people who prided themselves on their keen eyes and deep knowledge of their field. To learn that they had been deceived by fake coins was a blow to their pride. As he listened to their stories of recent trades and acquisitions, James realized the extent of the situation. The counterfeits were not just in Mr. Thompson's shop. They had infiltrated the close-knit community of collectors, circulating among them, undetected and unsuspected. But who could be behind such a sophisticated operation? James had his suspicions. His thoughts turned to a name that was whispered in hushed tones among law enforcement and collectors alike, the Mint Master. A notorious counterfeiter, known for his meticulous work and uncanny ability to recreate even the rarest and most valuable of coins. The Mint Master was an enigma, a ghost that seemed to exist only in the shadows. James knew that catching the Mint Master wouldn't be easy. This was a man who had fooled even the most seasoned collectors, a man who had turned counterfeiting into an art form. Yet the challenge didn't deter James. If anything, it made him more determined. He took a deep breath, his mind spinning with questions and theories. How was the Mint Master able to create such convincing counterfeits? What was his motivation? And where was he now? But James knew that the most pressing question was not just about finding the Mint Master, but about understanding him. But who was the Mint Master? And how was he producing these impeccable counterfeits? James wondered, his gaze drifting across the room, filled with people who loved coins not for their monetary value, but for the stories they told and the history they held. With the help of his partner, Detective Sarah, James began to unravel the Mint Master's operation. Their pursuit was a chess match of the mind, a dance of intellect and intuition. They poured over every detail, every lead, every possible connection. Each clue was a puzzle piece, a part of the grand picture they were trying to assemble. Detective Sarah, with her sharp analytical mind, proved to be an invaluable asset. She had a knack for connecting the dots, for seeing patterns where others saw chaos. 
Together, they traced the counterfeit coin's path, determined to find their origin. The trail was convoluted, a tangled web of transactions and trades, but they were relentless. They followed the trail to the local coin collector's club, where they met a group of avid collectors, their faces a mix of shock and betrayal. These were enthusiasts, people who loved the artistry and history of these coins. And to find out that their prized possessions were nothing more than clever forgeries, it was a blow to their trust. Their investigation took them to dark alleyways for undercover meetings and stakeouts that stretched into the wee hours. Each lead, each bit of information, brought them one step closer. Yet the Mint Master remained just out of reach. Then, a breakthrough. An anonymous tip came in, a ray of hope in the seemingly endless darkness. The tipster claimed to know the location of the Mint Master's workshop, an old warehouse on the outskirts of town. It was a lead, a solid lead, the kind of lead that makes your heart race and your palms sweat. But the world of counterfeiting was a murky one, filled with deception and misdirection. Could this be another wild goose chase? Or was this the break they had been waiting for? After all the dead ends and false leads, could this anonymous tip finally be the key to unlocking the Mint Master's secret? The tip was promising, but would it finally lead them to the Mint Master? Only time would tell. Their next move was critical. The game was far from over, and the Mint Master was still at large. In an abandoned warehouse, they found what they had been searching for, the Mint Master's workshop. The room was a testament to the Mint Master's craft. It was a shrine dedicated to the art of counterfeiting, filled with all the tools of the trade. Molds of various sizes, stacks of counterfeit coins, and a magnifying glass under the harsh light. There was an eerie quietness to the place, broken only by the distant echo of their footsteps. The air was heavy with the scent of metal and a lingering sense of deception. As they moved further into the workshop, they discovered a hidden door, cleverly concealed behind a stack of crates. Behind this door was a secret room, and within it, the Mint Master himself. He sat at a table surrounded by his creations, the counterfeit coins that had fooled even the most discerning of collectors. His face was lit by the glow of a single lamp, casting long shadows that danced on the walls. He smiled as they entered, a resigned smile that held a strange mix of defeat and contentment. The Mint Master was no ordinary criminal. He was a master engraver who had fallen on hard times. His craft was his livelihood, his passion, and his downfall. He confessed to his deeds, his voice filled with a quiet dignity. He had never intended to harm anyone. All he wanted was to create something beautiful, even if it was a lie. The room was filled with a tense silence as James placed the Mint Master under arrest. But as he led the man away, James couldn't help but feel a pang of empathy. Here was a man who had used his skills to survive, to create, even if it was in the wrong way. With a resigned smile, the Mint Master was arrested, but the case was far from closed in James's mind. The pursuit of justice, he knew, was not as clear-cut as it seemed. There were shades of gray, blurred lines where right and wrong intertwined. And sometimes, the pursuit of beauty could lead one down a treacherous path. As he left the warehouse, James couldn't help but reflect on the case. The echo of his footsteps in the dim-lit alley seemed to resonate with the rhythmic beating of his own thoughts. The Mint Master, as they called him, was a criminal, yes, but one who had been driven by desperation and a desire to create beauty in a world that had shown him its worst. James could see the paradox in the man, an artist who had used his skills not to create, but to replicate, to counterfeit. It was a sad irony that his talent had been used for deceit, yet there was a certain tragic beauty in the craftsmanship of the coins. James thought about the thin line between right and wrong, a boundary that often blurred in the face of human struggle. The Mint Master had crossed that line, of course. His actions were illegal, and they had consequences. Yet the man had not been driven by greed or a desire for power. He had been driven by need, by a desperate bid to survive in a world that had left him with few options. The detective pondered on the pursuit of justice, a pursuit he had dedicated his life to. It wasn't always straightforward. It wasn't always black and white. There were shades of gray, nuances that made each case unique, each criminal different. It was easy to label someone as a villain, to categorize them as bad, but people, James knew, were complex, 
layered, capable of both good and bad. The Mint Master, for all his faults, had touched a chord within James. He had shown the detective that even in the most unlikely places, there could be a spark of humanity, a story that deserved to be told. In the end, it was a case that would stay with him, a reminder that not everything is as it seems in the pursuit of justice. It was a lesson learned, a story etched in the annals of his memory, a reflection on the intricate dance between right and wrong.